So we do the solution now of exercise six. Uh, the design of an off-grid system with an inverter. Uh, just a repetition. Uh, we discussed uh, the questions about a uh, tropical solar home system, which has the following electricity needs. We have a ventilator, the power of 60 watts, that operates from 9.30 until 11 p.m. We have a five conventional light bulbs at 60 uh, watts each, operating from 7 p.m. until 11 p.m. There it's considered that we should think about energy saving option. So as an engineer, you should not only think about uh, the given values, you can also think that you modify, for example, some loads in order to make the whole system more economic. We have a notebook computer of uh, 30 watts uh, that operates from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. We have a TV set of 100 watts operating from 8 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. If you take a look at these numbers, at these values of the consumption, and see that there's not a lot of uh, room for improvement for the notebook and the TV set. What we should do is to calculate the load, respectively the daily consumption to be supplied, considering the energy saving options, and then we calculate the battery size for a system voltage of 24 volts. The Battery cycle efficiency of the round trip from charging to discharging is uh, 80%. Then we have the efficiency of the charge controller is which is 0.95 and the inverter efficiency is 90%. Then we calculate the panel size. Uh, we have a conversion efficiency under standard test conditions, just a uh, quite low temperature of 25 degrees while we are in the trucks. Te temperatures at the module are quite elevated. Therefore, we have a relatively low performance ratio of only 0 0.8. Uh, if we calculate uh, the panel size, we have also to consider the irradiance. While the system has to work through the whole year, we uh, take the typical irradiance uh, during a typical daily irradiance during the first month of the year. And for Rio, that's four kilowatt hours per square meter uh, per day. While if you compare it to Germany, we have in good locations one kilowatt hour per square meter per day. In really bad locations, we only have half a kilowatt hour per square meter per day. Uh, then uh, we have to calculate the cost of such a systems. First, the investments cost, the initial costs, the big K, and then the specific costs, small K, during 20 years. Uh, we calculate uh, with the irradiance, which is which you receive there, 1,800 kilowatt hours uh, per square meter per year. We consider PV panel at uh, one euro per watt. That's relatively expensive, but you have to consider local market prices that includes duties and so on. So that's a realistic value. And the lifetime of 25 years. So during 20 years is 25 years. We have to exchange that opposite to the battery, which has a, a lifetime of four years only. That's also due to the rated temperatures there. Uh, we have to exchange the battery uh, relatively often. And the mounting support structure, which is also a scheduled lifetime for 25 years, we calculate with half a euro per watt peak. We have to consider the energy saving measures. So it's a very good idea to substitute uh, the 60 watt antique light bulbs by LED bulbs. Eight watts is already uh, not really the latest generation, but uh, quite easy uh, to reach eight watt each. So we have, instead of um, 60 watts, we have eight watts. If you multiply it by five, because we have five light bulbs and the duration of use are four hours, we have instead of 1,200 watt hours per day or one two kilowatt hours, we have only 160 watt hours. That means we shift 86.6%. Uh, the plan how to design a system is included in the lecture. So first we determine the load. So we uh, take the power of each load and its duration of use. So we have the uh, end time of use minus the start time of use. Add these up uh, from load one to load n, if you have n different loads. And if you have an inverter, we have to consider the inverter efficiency also. Then we determine the battery size. So we have here the maximum applied depth of discharge, which is typical for at least AZ battery of 0 0.5. I'll show you a graph uh, later on that uh, if you use lithium ion batteries, they are more expensive 
but you can discharge them to a much larger extent not only because lifetime is also reduced there and uh, the days of autonomy so how often do you expect there is an equivalent day without any radiance that never happens but uh, you take this as an equivalent and in the tropics you take two days while in germany there could be long weather periods with little irradiance for a week or so and that is equal to four days without irradiance for the tropics it's enough to take two days of autonomy so we have here the energy to be stored in the battery that's energy uh, needed by the load multiplied uh, by the days of autonomy because you have to store for several days divided by the maximum depth of discharge the energy to be generated by photovoltaics uh, as i mentioned we have to use energy measures before it makes complete sense then we have to consider also the efficiency of the battery but also the electronics uh, that's here the charge controller Then we take the daily irradiance at a typical day in the worst month of operation. So usually the worst month of the year, but maybe if you have irrigation and use it for agriculture, uh, you don't have to consider all year, but the times when you use that system. So for us, it's all year and you can do it uh, via measurements or tables or simulation and so on. And uh, we call it the red day. That was given already in our example, the four kilowatt hours per square meter per day. Then you can calculate the area of the PV generator. This is the energy to be supplied by the PV generator divided by the irradiance of the day times the conversion efficiency under standard test conditions uh, times the performance ratio. You can also calculate the nominal power of a PV because usually you don't buy a PV not by area but uh, by nominal power under standard test conditions. So that's the area times the irradiance under standard test conditions. You all know that that is 1000 watt per square meter times efficiency can simplify that so we eliminate the conversion efficiency so even if you don't know that you can calculate that now you have the energy to uh, to be generated by photovoltaics from here times the irradiance under standard test conditions that is 1000 watt per square meter times the um, irradiance of a day in the worst month of the year times the performance ratio let's do that just again the repetition of that so we just start with the load consumption so we have one ventilator it operates for 13.5 hours and gives a load um, of energy be supplied during a day of 810 watt hours then we come to the leds not the light bulbs anymore we substitute them they consume eight watts only four hours and we have a consumption of 160 watt hours per day then we come to the notebook 30 watts times three hours and 90 watt hours for a day and the tv operating for two and a half hours 100 watt 250 watt hours all together here added up here we have to build the sum here that is 1310 watt hours consumption sometimes for the inverter you have to know the maximal power so if all if all appliances are switched on at the same time we have a maximum power of 198 watts so the maximum power of our inverter could be uh, 200 watt or so this is a small star that means uh, we did consider the inverter efficiency we calculate this also so we have here the load and we have to consider the inverter so this was our load we calculated we include the inverter then the next calculate the battery and the last step we calculate the size of the pv panel so the battery cycle efficiency take us 80%, the efficiency of the charge controller 95% and the inverter efficiency which we include now is 0.9. If you include that, so here we write that value W star load divided by the inverter efficiency. We have the actual load we have to consider and that is 1,455.56 watt hours that we have to supply by our PV panel. I mentioned already if we calculate uh, the depth of discharge, I show you this graph uh, how much uh, the lifetime depends on the depth of discharge for two different types of battery. You have the consumer battery, often cow batteries, and so on. If you see, uh, if you uh, discharge them very deeply, lifetime is very short, so this would mean for your 
application that's less than here. If you have industrial battery, they sure they are more expensive, about double as expensive as consumer battery. But as you see, a lifetime is much longer. Uh, even if you discharge it by 90%, it's about 800 cycles. Uh, good compromises that you uh, take 50% uh, of depth of discharge, then a lifetime is about 2,000, uh, 1,800 cycles. You can even prolong this lifetime if you, for example, only discharge it by 30%, uh, then a life cycle could come up to well, almost 4,000 cycles. This depends on a lot of parameters on the brand of the, your battery, but also on temperature. Temperature has a vast inf influence. Uh, rule over the thumb is if you increase the temperature of the battery by degrees, a uh, lifetime is only half. But we come to this a uh, bit later when we come to the chapter energy storage. So first here we take here 50% depth of discharge and we arrive here at 1,900, 1,800, 1,900 cycles. These are full cycles. Uh, we don't need the full cycle for every day. So lifetime is a bit longer, as I told, it's a bit calculated about 10 years, which we equivalent about 3,600 cycles and so on. So we calculate the better uh, size uh, now. We only take depth of discharge and two days of autonomy. We don't need uh, all the time this depth of autonomy, but for really bad day, we have to consider that um, two days of economy. So here we have our load times the um, days of autonomy, two days, depth of discharge divided by 0 0.5. Altogether, we have to store the theoretical maximum capacity is 5.8 kilowatt hours. Usually you don't buy by kilowatt hour battery, so you have a certain voltage and buy it by ampere hours. So uh, that's uh, called C, a C battery capacity. So in terms of ampere hours, so you have the energy to be stored in the battery divided by the voltage of that battery of 24 volts. And uh, so we arrive at 242.59 ampere hours. So that's uh, quite uncommon. So usually you have a size of a battery of 250 ampere hours. So uh, the actual battery size is a bit bigger, so it's about uh, 6 kilowatt hours. This is also good for the lifetime and also we have to considering manufacturing tolerances as we found out when we measured some battery sizes. It's never that accurate that you really have the capacity given on the number plate. So we calculate now the panel size. We have the conversion efficiency of 16% performance ratio of 0 0.8. Then uh, we have the load of the PV panel divided by the efficiency of the charge controllers and divided also by the efficiency of the battery. So we have to supply by photovoltaics 1.9 kilowatt hours per day. This is the number derived from here. So we don't have to consider the battery days of autonomy and one. we just have to consider are really the energy to be generated. So we have for the area of the PV generator, we use a formula. So you put that in. So the energy to be supplied is 1.915 kilowatt hours per day. Then we have the irradiance for worst month of the year. And the daily irradiance is 4 kilowatt hour, 4,000 watt hours times the performance ratio times the efficiency and the standard test conditions. So we arrive. Uh, just check also, it's always a good advice to check the units here. So divide it, gets, the day gets eliminated and kilowatt hour gets eliminated here. And so we arrive at, so we have a size of 3.74 square meter. And the nominal power is then, if you put in the number five, so uh, the size area times uh, the irradiance under standard test conditions times the conversion efficiency under standard uh, test conditions, because it's actually the power under standard test conditions. And uh, that is very close to 600 watts. The actual area size is then a bit bigger than we calculated uh, because we can't usually that's the next size. It's very close to that at 3.75 square meters. So let's come um, also calculate it directly. So PST is just, so we don't have to consider the conversion efficiency by that. So we are now calculating the costs, the initial the investment costs and the specific costs during 20 years. This have been the values given here for the location and the total costs are the costs of the specific cost of the PV panel calculated this is one euro per watt. 
If they're in a factory in China, you may get them from 0.3, but uh, there are margins, there are uh, customs and so on to pay and so on. So that's expensive. Same for the batteries. And here, local produce balance of system costs. That means installation and substructure and so on. So we just put in the numbers here, one euro for the PV panel plus 0 0.5 for the support structure is 1.5 a euro per watt times 600 watt nominal power under standard test conditions. Uh, then we have the battery cost is 300 euro per kilowatt hour. We have six kilowatt hour. Altogether, we arrive at 2,700 euro initial price. So we don't have to care during this 20 years about PV balance of systems costs. But the battery have to be exchanged after year four, after year eight, after year 12, after year 16. While we consider 20 years only, we don't have to exchange it anymore in the year 20 because the financial horizon is limited there are 20 years. So we just finish at year 20. So if we see at this up, so we have the cost for 20 years. So that's the cost of the PV it lasts for 20 years. We have uh, five times the cost of the battery, so initial costs plus four exchanges and the cost of our uh, balance of systems. So if we, if we add this up, so this is the same. The PV generator initial cost is the cost also of 20 years. Also for the balance of system costs, so we have one euro for the PV panel plus 0 0.5 euro for the BOS, so we have 1.5 euro per watt altogether times 600 watt standard test conditions, five times the battery costs, 300 euro per kilowatt hour times six kilowatt hours. We have then 900 euros plus 5,400 euros is equivalent. This is 6,300 euro. What you clearly see that the cost of the PV generate there is quite low. The main costs are the batteries. So if you do all the cost optimization, you should think about how to make the batteries cheaper, not so much really about how to make the photovoltaic generator cheaper. These are the investments costs during 20 years. Let's take a look at the specific costs. So first issue is if you calculate that for a yearly irradiance of 1,800 kilowatt hour per square meter per year, so that means how much worth is our PV electricity um, also being stored. As the next step, uh, we would all take into consideration how much is it from the load perspective? How much does each kilowatt hour of the consumed energy at the existing load costs? But let's start first, as uh, mentioned in the exercise, uh, we calculate that for a yearly irradiance of 1,800 kilowatt hours per square meter. So that's a bit more than the worst month equivalent. So we will have some surplus during the year. So we can attach additional loads. For example, in summer, we can attach air conditioning or something like that, or use the ventilator for a longer time period. So this is what I said. PV production is calculated for the worst month of the year. In summer, we have more. So now we calculate the energy being generated uh, during the whole year or even for 20 years. So we have this year 20 years uh, times uh, the irradiance 1,800 watt uh, kilowatt hours per square meter per year of irradiance. That is our area of our PV generator. That's the conversion efficiency under standard test conditions. And that's the performance ratio considering the elevated temperature and non perpendicular incidence and so on. So it's the non STC conditions. And altogether we have a 17.28 megawatt hours. The specific energy costs, so that this is the investments cost during 20 years divided by the energy being generated during that 20 years. That's 1,300 euro divided by 1,720 kilowatt hours. And so we arrive here at 36.5 euro cent per kilowatt hour. So that's definitely more than even in Germany you pay for grid electricity. Uh, but as you saw, uh, the main costs are not from the PV generator, it's from the battery. As a comparison, now uh, we consider for the even loads, uh, so even a bit worse. So there will be wasted energy during summer. 
we just consider the energy consumed by the existing loads given in that exercise. So the electricity generation after doing 20 years is more, but I now consider the load only being consumed. So we have the daily load here. So remember 1455.56 watt hours per day. Then we have 20 years, we have a 365.25. That's the actual number of days. If you have 20 years, we can really use that thing considering also the shift years and so on. And so this is 265.25 days per year. So days gets eliminated, uh, years get eliminated. And here we have what hour per day, the day gets eliminated. So we have here the rest what hours or exactly uh, 10,600. 33 kilowatt hours of energy being produced, of electric energy being consumed, sorry, with loads during that 20 years. This, uh, we have the investment costs and uh, the load during 20 years, and that is our result. So we have, considering the existing loads, uh, we have 59.2 euro cents per kilowatt hour. So that's almost double as expensive as electricity from the grid in Germany. Thank you very much.